kind of cool being able to sit out underneath this here canopy. We did have a good storm roll through here. It was pretty windy. So I came out to see if, you know, had any any wind damage at all and everything's doing great. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's not good. It blew over my, my squash plant. Or my zucchini. My good zucchini too. Unfortunate. Definitely he's got some issues. It was a big plant too. But it is better to rip out a plant that's clearly dying. Nice little squash bug hanging out down there at the bottom. Hello, Shed Wars. How are you doing today? So, it's time for another video. And as soon as I do this, the wind comes on. It's nice to actually be a part of Shed Wars and actually see, see us growing things. Whereas before we were just talking about growing stuff, but uh, really showing it actually happening. Today I wanted to spend a little bit of time in the garden with you to talk about squash bugs. So we've had a ton of squash bugs, or quite a bit, not, not a ton I shouldn't say. It hasn't been like an infestation, but we do have squash bugs for sure. And squash bugs are normal on squash. You're going to probably see squash bugs. If you don't see squash bugs, uh, I would be very surprised and you probably are doing some voodoo magic. I don't want to hear it. So, but actually, I'm, actually I do want to hear it. What's your voodoo magic? But we have all these beautiful squash plants that have been producing like crazy for us and are going to continue to do so. For a little bit longer there's some zucchini down there and uh, we've got more squash coming up over here as well and squash have a couple of pretty bad uh, pests I mean there's more than two but the two that you really care most about are squash bugs and vine borers now we did pull out a couple of plants over here that looked like they ha might have vine borer damage. Uh, for those that don't know, a vine borer is actually a moth that will have a worm, or that will hatch as a worm and will go into the base of the plant and eat it from the inside. It'll eat the inside of the base. Little zucchini that can be picked. Actually, two hidden under here. This one looks like it hid from me for a few days. But yeah, all right, cool. We got a couple zucchini. But so the point of this video is not to pick zucchini. Although, if you grow zucchini, you know that you're always picking zucchini. There's nothing you can do about it. It's a constant thing once they start growing. So again, a, a vine borer will get into, as a matter of fact, let me go over here and use, well, this small one right here will work as an example. So a vine borer will get into this stem right here and it will actually eat it from the inside and the entire plant will die. So you do not want a vine borer. They are the worst. Um, 
Squash bugs will do damage and can kill an entire plant. They can. But what they do is they suck on the plant. So they're suckers. They stick their little tongues inside the plants and suck the juice out of it. And the damage that they cause can cause you know, leaves to wilt and the whole plant to eventually die. But you also may just get some damage on some and then the plant just survives. So if you ever see a vine borer moth, and I'll put a picture of a vine borer moth up there, kill it. I don't know of any good purpose they have, but I know they do extreme damage to uh, squash plants. Um, so I could try to get rid of those. Squash bugs, less so much. They look like little stink bugs. They're not exactly the same thing, but the uh, squash bug will, again, do a lot of damage to the plant because they'll put a bunch of eggs underneath the leaves of the plant. Those will hatch into these little nymphs, and then they will grow up, and they will also feed. And they're also really difficult to, um, di difficult to kill as adults. So you want to get rid of the eggs, kill the nymphs, and try to defeat them that way because it's really hard to kill them as adults. Now, I believe pyrethrin can kill them as an adult if you spray them, but I'm not 100% on that. Um, I'll try to do some research and find that. I'll put that in here. But a lot of pesticides and stuff won't work for them. So once you get them, yeah, it's really just squish them. Manual pesticide. Homicide of... A lot of piss. Oh, there's a little squash bug right there. I'm speaking of the devil. So, I just like to take the leaves here and squish them. There you go. Try not to get it on my hands as much as I can. Here's a little trick. Tape. So if you look underneath these leaves, there you go. So if you look there, hopefully you guys can see that. I don't have to check it after this, but if you look, there are these little eggs and they're kind of copper looking. Those are squash bug eggs. So one adult will lay several of these over the lifespan. It's hard to kind of get these off. They're kind of stuck to the leaves without tearing the leaf up. But a good trick is to use tape. Now I like electrical tape because I find electrical tape to be just sticky enough. Finger trap here. You can actually get them to come off onto the tape. And then you can actually squish them. They seem pretty hard, but they're actually fairly soft. You can squish them. They just kind of pop. And uh, and that kills them. And that's what you want to do. You don't want to just drop them down into the soil because all that will do is they'll just grow down there. But push the tape in pretty hard, pull off, and you got yourself some eggs. And this is a lot easier than trying to pick them off and does less damage to the plant. There's some right here on top. So one thing, if you can see on these, you see how they're turning kind of yellow? So they go from copper to a kind of brown and then they start to yellow. And the yellow ones are when they start to become a little more clear or when they're about to hatch. So it doesn't matter when they are about to hatch, you want to get them all off. So there you go. Matter of fact, if you look at that one, I think there's actually a little aphid or a little, uh, little squash bug coming out of it. So another thing about squash that some people don't know, you can't eat the flowers. If you see these little uh, shoots that come off that look like this, that have flowers on the end, those are actually the male flowers of the plant. The female flowers will always have little fruit behind them. So. Obviously, this is a baby fruit here, but if you look there, you can see where there's a little fruit here, right behind that flower. That's going to be a female flower, or is a female flower. 
And so the male flowers, you know, basically the bees come around and hit the male flowers and then they hit the female flowers and that's what pollinates the fruit. So, so our idea with this and what we're doing is we're actually going to let them produce a lot because they produce a lot in the beginning and then they kind of slow off. And then they're not going to die. We're not going to let them die. We're going to rip them out before they get more diseases or they get more pests. That way we can just continue with our succession planting over here and just burn these and not let them contribute to the pest population. But we're going to have pests no matter what. And so that kind of ends our squash topic. But... I wanted to show you guys an update on our garden. Came through here the other day and cleaned out some weeds. When it rains, I do. I try to come in here every time it rains and get as much up as I can. But if you look at our cucumbers, they're starting to grow up the trellis a little bit. The trellis is hanging on. You know, this is the first year we've done this trellis and it kind of works. We did have one break at the end there. We just put more zip ties up I do think that it's probably better for peas or something light than it's going to be for big old cucumber plants because just feeling this and these really haven't even grown up on here but this here it's it's pulled pretty tight um, so I would actually say it's probably a good idea and we haven't done this yet probably won't but to run, if you're going to do it with T-posts, to run a metal wire across and loop it through here so that at every point up here it has support in the middle. Um, just a suggestion on that. Because I think, I think this stuff's pretty good and pretty strong, but it's not made of metal and uh, I think it can, it can pop and break. Yeah, buddy, get in there. Make a pickle for me. At least a cucumber. But yeah, our cucumbers are doing well. Um, I've got to get in here and see if I can get some of these to run up this vine. To vine up instead of out. But we're starting to get to the point where we're getting little, little babies up here on the top, which will be nice. Um, I think next year... And maybe even some later this year but I like the arch trellises where you use like cattle panels or something to where it can grow over it because then you just walk underneath and the fruit like beans especially the beans are just kind of hanging down and it makes it so much easier to pick you don't have to get down on your hands and knees or bend over and um is to get your uh, cucumbers but we've already got a bunch of cucumbers off of this got a bunch in the refrigerator for canning this weekend and uh we're, i gotta get out here and get more beans because i i definitely picked some the other day picked 10 pounds of beans off of this and uh i know that there's a lot more on there we can see them from here so gotta get back in there and pick those and we'll do, once these bush beans are done, we're going to probably rip them up and do another set of bush beans here. We may change our mind on that, but we like beans, so we want a lot of beans this year. Our tomato plants. So I did have some uh, in rot on some of these, and I think it's just from inconsistent watering. I like that guy. So I think it's inconsistent watering is a problem. You know, this happens from usually a lack of calcium but it's not necessarily a lack of calcium in the soil it's a lack of the ability to bring up calcium to the fruit which is usually done with inconsistent watering so i'm trying to make sure that we we don't just rely on rain that i consistently use my drip tape to give them water um, but they're definitely growing up and putting on some fruit so as long as these keep putting on fruit we'll be all right Here's our second planting of squash and zucchini. Most of them came up. We planted them pretty heavy, so we'll have to thin them back. But they're going to sit at this spot for a minute while they collect some energy. And then they're going to blow up just like the other ones. And 
we're gonna have some, some squash. And over here we have our black eyed peas, which look look pretty good. They're starting to recover from some initial uh, pest damage that they had. I am excited, even though there's still some pest damage on my okra here. But I am excited because my okra is about to start flowering. They start pretty short and they keep producing. You just gotta keep cutting, keep cutting, keep cutting and they'll keep growing and producing. So I am excited about my okra this year. I love okra. For those that don't know, you can see the tassels on the corn starting to come out on some of them. All right, from the garden over here, the weedy garden, See you guys on the other side. Take it easy, Shed Wars.